Over the past few years, the car market has gone haywire and the car prices have skyrocketed. It has gotten very, very difficult to find something that's affordable, not to mention something that's decently equipped. But not today, because today I have the 2024 Hyundai Elantra Preferred with the tech package. This comes in at just under $29,000 Canadian, and it might just be the best bang for your buck. Let's get started. Coming in at only $24,000, the base model Elantra is one of the most affordable compact sedans you can buy on the market right now. However, that model is rather base and does lack a few options as you would expect. So step up to the next trim up is the preferred model, which comes in at $26,000. That gives you heated steering wheel, blind spot warning, as well as keyless entry with push to start. This model here, is actually the preferred model with the tech package, which includes even more features like a sunroof, 17 inch alloy rims, as well as a gloss black dual 10.25 inch screen, which looks really, really nice. It also has ambient lighting, which again is pretty cool. So in my books, this already is a very well equipped vehicle. To put things into perspective, the base model Honda Civic actually costs more than this, and that one has Steelies. For the 2024 model, the Elantra has gotten an exterior refresh. Now we have these super slim and long headlights as well as a very slim front end along with the flush Hyundai logo. I don't think this looks the best out of the bunch, but I do think it looks more mature compared to the pre-refresh model. You also get LED headlights as standard. Over to the side, Pretty much everything is carryover from the pre-refresh model. Nothing has changed in terms of design. You still get these angular lines, which some, be some people like it, some people don't. I actually don't mind them. I think they are pretty unique in design. And then you get these diamond cut alloy rims, which I must say is a huge upgrade compared to the preferred model without the tech package. Over to the rear, the Elantra maintains most of its design cues, like this super sharp edge trunk lid, as well as the taillight design. For this trim, you do not get the coast-to-coast -coast LED taillights, but what you do get is a nice little refreshed rear bumper. Now you have this silver trim piece that goes across the entire back of the car, as well as a few fins that makes it look like a diffuser. In terms of the trunk space, there is a lot for the Elantra. It offers a crazy amount of trunk space. You can pl put plenty of stuff in here. My only complaint is that the trunk floor feels and look very flimsy. And I would like that Hyundai improve that a little bit in terms of the material quality. You can also fold down the rear seats using these levers here, but it folds down as one big piece. It doesn't have a 60-40 split like most other cars. Under the hood is a 2-liter naturally aspirated Atkinson Cycle inline-4 engine that puts out 147 horsepower and 132 pound-feet of torque. It also uses multi-port fuel injection, which means you don't have to worry about carbon buildups. In terms of the transmission, this uses an IVT transmission. What's an IVT and how does it differ from a CVT? An IVT stands for Intelligent Variable Transmission. It is essentially a CVT, but instead of a belt-driven system, it uses a chain-driven system, which promises more longevity. It also has a different set of programming, which allows you to give you some fake shifts and whatnot. And this being an Elantra, of course, it is front-wheel drive only. Jumping into the interior, the preferred uses cloth seats, but I actually do think they look quite nice considering they have this nice little graphic stripe down the center as well as a lot of stitching lines that make up a pretty nice looking seat pattern. Aside from that, I get plenty of leg room here as you can see. I'm 5'9 for reference, the seat in front is adjusted to my seat driving position. I get plenty of leg room. Very, very comfortable. Headroom is also not bad. I still get a couple of inches of headroom here, even if I'm sitting straight up. If I want to do a little bit more of a relaxing seat position or sit sitting position, very, very comfortable. Now, of course, this being a more affordable vehicle, you could expect a little bit more of hard plastic in the seat back here, as well as the door trim. But actually, for the most part, 
you actually get a lot of soft touch materials like the door panel here and stuff like that. So I don't really have much to complain. One complaint though is that I don't have a center armrest, which kind of sucks. But this specific vehicle is optioned with their really nice and really high quality accessory of these floor mats. I think they look fantastic and feels fantastic. You should get one of these as well. So the front seats are also very comfortable and uses the same cloth materials from the back. Also with the stripe and the pattern design, which is pretty good looking. You get heated seats as standard, but on this trim you get heated steering wheel as well as this beautiful gloss black dual 10.25 inch infotainment screen. The decorative white circle on the left still remains, but I do have an idea for a Hyundai. Why not make this into a magnetic phone charger that I could just slap my phone up here, you know, as a phone stand? That'd be nice. Let me know down in the comments what you think. Over here you get your dual zone climate control as part of the tech package as well as drive modes down here and also a physical shift knob. You do not get electronic brake hold, instead you get a physical handbrake down here. What I found really interesting on this car is such a minute detail but I noticed that the rear view mirrors actually have two points of adjustment so instead of just swiveling like this you can actually pull it up and down which I find quite interesting. I've never really seen this in any other cars. Comment down below let me know if there's any other cars that have this two point adjustment situation going on in the rear view mirror. I'm gonna be honest with you guys here. I didn't really have much expectations when it came to how this car drives. I mean, 150 horsepower paired with a continuously variable transmission isn't exactly the recipe for a driver's car. And it's not, but I've been pleasantly surprised during my time of testing. Let me explain. There isn't a whole lot of power, there isn't a whole lot of torque from this 2 liter engine, but the IVT is surprisingly responsive and it puts me in the right rev range pretty quickly, maximizing what this measly power unit will give me. It also does give me some fake shifts which makes driving a bit more natural and a little bit less CVT. Yeah, it's quite responsive. I'm stuck in traffic a little bit here, but... All things considered, the IVT tries... It tried its best to, to make up for the deficit of the power. But the purpose of an IVT transmission is, of course, for the efficiency. So let's talk about it. On the highway, I was easily able to get 5 liters per 100 kilometers and sometimes even mid to high 4 liter range, which is amazing. In the city, I'm averaging about 7 liters per 100 kilometers. The official rated fuel economy on this Elantra is also better than what you would get in a gas Toyota Corolla or a gas Honda Civic, which, which means this, this is probably best in class in terms of fuel economy. These are crazy, crazy good numbers. And it's so good in my opinion that I don't even think you need to spend the extra money to get a hybrid. Another thing that I was kind of caught off guard was the steering response. It doesn't give me a whole lot of road feedback, but it sure is responsive, making it feel more agile to drive. Just look at this. I'm barely turning the steering. It, it, this is very responsive. It's great. The suspension and ride quality is also pretty good. Very stable on the highway, very comfortable and compliant for daily commutes. The 17 inch rims are also not too big for this car and definitely helps with the ride quality. There is however definitely some body roll when you take fast turns. In terms of safety feature, this almost base model Elantra comes with quite a lot. You've got emergency braking, blind spot warning, rear cross traffic alert, automatic high beam, as well as lane keep assist and lane centering. The lane centering works really well. I can even activate it on local streets and as soon as my green steering wheel turns on, you know, it drives itself pretty much. The blind spot warning is also good because it beeps me in addition to 
only flashing me when there's a car in my blind spot if I have my signal turned on. However, no car is perfect, so on to some not so great things about this Elantra. First of all, this trim does not come with adaptive cruise control. You'd have to go up to the luxury trim to get that. A lot of other manufacturers like Toyota or Honda have already made adaptive cruise control standard, so if Hyundai can just match that, it will just make this Elantra just that much more competitive. The second thing that I don't like is this brake feel. The brake pedal is actually fine. You know, the brake stiffness is, the pedal stiffness is pretty linear. However, the brake force doesn't come in until very late of the brake pedal. You really have to step on the brake pedal to get it to stop. The brake force is also fine once you step all the way down, but I just wish that it was a little bit more linear. It's not a big deal, it's just something you'd have to get used to. Anyway, to sum up, aside from the lack of adaptive cruise control, the Elantra Preferred with Tech Package is a fantastic car for the money, and in my books, definitely the best car you can buy for less than 29,000 Canadian dollars in 2024, brand new. See, the brakes are actually good, you just have to step all the way down. Anyway, you also get five year warranty with this. So if you're in the market for an affordable family sedan, compact sedan, I think you definitely need to seriously consider this. Do you agree that this is the best car you can buy for the money? Or would you pick something else? Let me know down in the comments below. Thank you for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you next time.